this is a cycloid drive. Now it's called that because the gear, which is this bit here, has that shape profile to it. It's called a cycloid profile. It follows the shape of a circle. Actually, when it's a circle going around a circle, it's a hypercycloid. So more correctly, it's a hypercycloid drive. With the hypercycloid drive, what happens is you have an eccentric in the center. As you turn the actual main input, the eccentric makes this gear wobble passing through these pins. As it passes through the pins, of course, it rotates. But it rotates much more slowly. In fact, the gear ratio of a cycloid is determined by the number of lobes, these teeth here. Normal gears, normal, are, are what are called involute gears because their tooth profile is an involute. This is a cycloid profile. So the gear ratio can be dramatically reduced to really quite interesting amounts, to be honest, that involute gears can't work with. So cycloids work with much higher gear ratios, as I say. This particular one is 10 to 1. Now, when they make cycloids like this, because it's being pushed to the edge, it's off center. So the thing would turn turning, which of course it needs to do, it would wobble like crazy if it turned at any speed. So what you normally do is you create two of these discs, one placed over that way and the second one placed over that way a little bit so that as they turn they even out the wobble. That's pretty sort of standard really for these, although they work perfectly fine at slow speeds with only one of these plates. Now the thing is, these plates both have 10 lobes. It's, it's how they're designed to work. And of course you immediately, or I immediately think, what would happen if we used one lobe less? So say this had 10 and this had nine, what would be the result? Now to me, that's an interesting question. So I turn to FreeCAD, FreeCAD Workbench, because FreeCAD Workbench does these kind of gears super easily. Right, we're in FreeCAD. Let's open up a new file and then go to here where it says part design, click on it and there is gear. This is a workbench you load yourself. So if you don't have it, then you can download it from the net and just install it and it will come up and click on gear and it will pull up the gears workbench. Once you're on the gears workbench, you can see you've got a whole lot of very useful gears. And here we have a hypercycloid gear. Click on that and it will generate a hypercycloid gear for you. There it is, top plate, bottom plate, and all of the pins. If we click on here, then we can see the settings that we've got, and you'll see that it's saying, show disk zero true, uh, true. We only want to look at one of these disks, so let's set that at false. We're also seeing the pins. Let's see that as false, so all we see is one of the cycloids. So then there's a few more settings that we can change. It's 10 millimeters high by default. That's a bit high for me. I want that at false. Uh, sorry, at five millimeters. So set that at five millimeters. The eccentricity, that's the bit it wobbles by, is set at 1.5. I want that a bit bigger. Let's set that at two. The hole radius looks fine for me. You see it's gone a little weird, and that's because the pin circle's too low. Let's set that at 100. And although we can't see the pins, this is all they'd call it the roller diameter, the pins are set at three millimeters. Let's reset that to 10. And then we've got the teeth number. Let's pick something random like 38. There we go, we've drawn our first cycloid. Now we can export that just by hitting file and export. Once we've done that, then we want it one tooth bigger. This is totally random. So let's put that at 39. And hey presto, we've got our 39 tooth uh, lobed gear that we can export again and print off. Now we want to have a look at the actual pins. So if we set this show pins back to true, and then refresh it, there we go. There will be the pins at the correct pin radius that we want. We only want to see one of them, so show disk one as true. Let's change that to false, refresh it, and we get our pin circle. Now we want to set that height because this is actually 20 millimeters high. There it is, pin height 20 millimeters. That's a bit high for what I want, so let's set that at 10. And there's our pins. Now these are the pins for the tooth at 39. We also did one at 38, if you remember. So change that back to 38. 
And there we go, we've got the second one. And we can export both of those, ready to re-import and play around with it in Tinkercad. And here we are in Tinkercad. All I've done is import them. I've also added a hole here at 80 millimeters, but this is the orange one is the smaller one with 38 lobes. And this brown one, green one, is the larger one with 39 lobes. So raise the larger one by five millimeters. And then we're going to align it to the smaller one. And we align it to the uh, one edge and one edge. There we go, and now we can group it. Right, now all I've done is import one of the sets of pins. And if we create a disc that will go further than the pin, align it, and we've got a hole here that is five millimeters from the bottom and small enough so that it intersects the pins just beyond halfway down. And then we can align that. So the orange is 10 millimeters, which is the same height as the pins, and the hole that we've got, which I'm selecting the orange and the hole, is a little bit smaller. You can see where it intersects with the pins, and then we uh, choose the orange cylinder and the hole and group them, then we'll actually get this. Now we can put a hole in the center of that, which is 20 millimeters in my case, so hit the shift key, select both, put it to the center of the orange by centering it using the center buttons. And then we can group the whole lot. There we go, we have our bottom case and we do exactly the same. This is the one with the 39 pin low, but it ends up, ends up being 40 pins. Now we do the same with the other lobe, which is 38 lobe, and that'll have 39 pins. Right, those three bits are basically our gear. Of course, we need a driving eccentric. So we need to create the eccentric of the same size as the small hole under there. And for that, it's 30 millimeters, remember. Grab a cylinder, smooth the edges, make it 30 by 30, make it 4.5 millimeters high. So it's just a little lower than the thickness of one of the lobed rings that we've just done. And then we need a center in it for the driving. For the driving, we're going to drive it with an axle at 20, which is why we made the holes here 20. So again, smooth it, and then we can center it. Now that's at the center. If you remember, the eccentric was two millimeters, so we need to shift that over by two millimeters, making sure the snap grid is set to one, that we've highlighted the hole. Just use the across arrow, one, two. Then we can merge it with that, and we have our driving eccentric. Now, of course, we need an axle and some clips, but that's basically it. So when we've printed it off, we get two of these. One's gonna be held static and the other is gonna be the output disc. In those, then we put this compound disc here, the compound cycloid. And remember, it is actually just two cycloids with one tooth difference that are basically glued one on top of the other, and that's going to be the centered drive disc. Of course, we need an axle and eccentric, which are right here. To get that in the right place, take one of these clips, and there's two of them, pop the clip on, drop it through with the clip on the outside, and with the eccentric, just push it into place, making sure it's free to turn, and then put a spot of glue on there. Now, you might risk gluing it to the bottom plate, so the easiest thing is to take the clip back out, Take the eccentric out and glue it once it's out. We've done that, it's free to turn. We take our eccentric there, pop it in. Now when we turn that one, notice how quickly that's turning. This one is turning at 39 to one. So we have a 39 to one ratio there. Now we pop this one on. Get it lined up, pop on the second clip so that everything's held in place and we can glue it to this stand. It's this back disc that you glue to the stand because that's the one that's fixed and that's the one that outputs. Now clearly if you want to output from this, you could just put a gear around it or put a gear right here. It'll rotate at the same speed as this, but we'll glue that on and then we'll have a look at what happens to that gear ratio. Okay, so to demonstrate this, I've lined up two dots right there and I've lined up two dots right there because what happens is that when you put two gears like this together as a cycloid, you in fact multiply each of the discs. So if you remember the first disc was 38 to 1 and the second disc is 39 to 1, the overall gear ratio of this is 
1,482 to 1, or if you like, nearly 1,500 to 1. So I'm going to have to turn the axle 1,500 times to get that to go around, and that'll take quite a while. So I'm just going to turn it quite a few times so you'll see the dot progress, but incredibly slowly. So here we go. ridiculous. <laughs> I lost count of how many turns, but you can see that the dot has in fact moved a tiny part. I'm figuring 15 hundredths of the number of turns I put in there. So there we go. Using essentially only three parts, we've created a hypercycloid hyperdrive with a ridiculous gear ratio of 1500 to 1. That's incredible, really, when you think about it. Now, of course, I have made these large so we can demonstrate, but you can shrink them down if you want. And I will actually post these onto Thingiverse should anybody be interested in playing around with such a thing, because, of course, as speed goes down, torque goes up. So the torque on this output ring is going to be incredible, actually, truly. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Please do remember to like and subscribe. It does help the channel. And thank you very much for watching.